My name is Brian Heffler. I'm a board certified neurosurgeon. And um, today I want to talk to you about how do you become a neurosurgeon and talk about my specific journey so you can understand what it takes to become a neurosurgeon. For neurosurgery specifically, at least in the United States, um, after high school, you need to do four years of college and then four years of medical school. And then you need to do a neurosurgery residency specifically. And that ranges from seven to nine years. So it's about 15 years of training after high school. And what I wanna do is I wanna take you through the process of becoming a neurosurgeon. Let me explain that to you. And I'll tell you about my personal journey as well, because if you wanna be a neurosurgeon, I think you have to have a strong why of why you want to be a neurosurgeon. And I wanted to show you what my why was. In high school, at the end of high school, I wanted to be a marine biologist. So never, um, never think that you can't be what you wanna be because you have something else planned. And I was all signed up um, at the University of South Florida to become a marine biologist. And then I had a, a personal experience in life. Uh, my brother, Eric, who was 21 at the time, he's three years older than me, was in a bad car accident in Ohio where my family lived. And uh, he needed emergency brain surgery in the middle of the night. My mom called me that morning um, and said, your brother's been in a horrible car accident and he might die and you need to come back home now. And I'd never flown on a plane, but I hopped on a plane and I came home and I remember, you know, I've never been really in a hospital before. I've never seen an ICU. And I remember when I first stepped into the intensive care unit and I saw my brother lying there. Um, he didn't look like my brother. He, he had a white bandage around his head with a metal tube coming out of his skull. His face was all swollen and black and blue. I could hardly recognize him. He had tubes coming out of both sides of his chest. He had a tube in his stomach. He had a breathing tube in his mouth. Um, and it was one of the most uh, horrible things that I've ever seen in my life as far as a family member goes. But, you know, I stayed there for two weeks and as a family, we would wait day by day by day, waiting for the neurosurgeon to come around and talk to us. And he would just come around for a few minutes just to tell us enough would my brother live or die. My brother ended up living. He was in a coma for six months. He could uh, never walk or talk again. And he re required constant care the rest of his life. But those two weeks of me being at home in the intensive care unit, in that environment, changed my whole perception on what I wanted to be. And so I actually flew back to Florida. I had been living with my grandparents down there. I dropped out of my classes at University of South Florida and I moved back home. And I, I went right into college that fall um, at the University of Toledo. And so I decided there and then I wanted to be a neurosurgeon. I got into college, started my college career um, so you have to do four years of college. So I, I got a bachelor's of arts, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. I finished my four years um, of college. And then from there, I started applying to medical schools, which was quite the process. There actually is a service nowadays that does just that. It's called Motivate MD. And what they do, you know, they, they employ hundreds of medical students and doctors that help you with the whole process. So they will help you uh, formulate a good CV and make it look very official. They will help you with your personal statement, help you brainstorm ideas of what to write about. They will help you with uh, mock interviews and they will help you practice at interviews. And they'll help you with the whole application process of all the, all the forms and applications that you have to fill out. But what I also like about this company is they haven't forgot that as a student, you don't have a lot of money. So they make it very affordable for you, but yet keep it very professional. So they give you a lot of um, bang for your buck. But also, you know, you have to remember that going through this whole process is very emotional. I mean, it's very stressful trying to do all this and get into a medical school and residency because it's so competitive. And so I think this whole process of this company helping you will just help you through that emotionally, you know, and, and take some of the stress off your plate. I've been happy to partner with Motivate MD because I, I think they bring a lot of value and I believe in their mission. And I hope everybody out there who is considering going into medical school or through the residency process and application process will consider using their services. You can learn more about Motivate MD in the video description or by tapping on the link here. Back to my journey, I applied to multiple medical schools, but ultimately I ended up going to the Medical College of Ohio here in Toledo, Ohio, which is now called the University of Toledo Medical School. Um, I did four years of medical school and during, you know, medical school is four years. The first two years is basic sciences and you, you dissect the human cadaver. And then the, the third and fourth year are your clinicals. And uh, at the end of my second year, um, I had another personal experience with my mom. So one morning, my mom had told me that she was having trouble writing uh, a letter. And my mom loved to write letters. Every morning, she would write letters. 
and I came over right away and I could see that her hand was weak and she couldn't hold a, a pencil and she couldn't write. And I said, mom, how long has this been going on for? And she said, well, about three days. And my guess is it was probably longer than that. But, um, you know, I was scared because my mom couldn't use her hand properly. So I had actually knew the neurosurgeon who had operated on my brother so many years ago. And I called him and told him what was going on. And he had my mom come right into the hospital to get a CAT scan of her brain. And on her CAT scan, my mom had like seven tumors, some of them that were very large in her brain. Um, so, you know, she got admitted to the hospital and um, she didn't know what was going on. She just got admitted, but, but I knew my mom didn't have long to live because she had seven big tumors in her brain and it, it's just like a death sentence. I knew enough at that point in my career that it was bad. And I remember going to sleep that night and my mom was in the hospital and I remember sleeping and waking up in the morning. It's like a, it's like a nightmare that you can't wake up from. It's like one of those things that you wish it wasn't real, but I knew it was real. So early that morning, like at 6.30 in the morning, I went into the hospital to see my mom and my mom was crying horribly and I didn't know what was going on. I said, mom, what's going on? And she said that the doctor came in a little bit ago and told me that I have cancer in my brain and, and I'm gonna need all this treatment, you know, maybe surgery, chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and, and I probably don't have long to live. And I always remember that because I don't, I don't know why anybody would walk in and tell a, a, a person who doesn't even know what's going on that they have you know brain cancer and I've always remembered that and I've always used that lesson and I never go in on a patient who's alone without their family and tell them something they don't even know about so that was a big learning point for me but my mom ultimately um, ended up having two surgeries on her brain she had chemotherapy and radiation therapy all her hair fall out I remember um, her vomiting constantly and, and you know, at about a month's time after she got diagnosed, I, I just knew, I remember the day it happened, it wasn't my mom anymore. She was just talking goofiness. She didn't even hardly recognize me. And I just knew my mom was gone. From the, from the day she was diagnosed to the day she died, my mom um, only lived three months. It was three months time. And that was a big learning point for me as well, because, you know, we put my mother through all those things, just a miserable existence for three months and, and her quality of life was horrible. And that was all done, I don't think so much for my mom, because she wasn't making the decisions we were, our family was, but I think it was done for us because, you know, we didn't, I didn't want to lose my mom and, and it's hard to let go. And so I think we put her through all of that for us and not her. And so when I, as a neurosurgeon now, as I talk to families about um, these issues, I always use my mom, my brother and my mom as examples because more is not always better. And sometimes it's more humane and better to let someone go instead of putting them through all the uh, technology that we have nowadays. I finished my four years of medical school and it wasn't easy having lost my mom, but that's where you need to stay focused and dedicated and remember your why. And I always remembered my why. It was my brother and my mom. So I finished medical school and now it was time to get into residency. And that's a whole nother application process that's super competitive, especially for neurosurgery. Um, you know, you're gonna have to go through the whole process again. You gotta have a personal statement. You gotta have a CV. You've got to interview at multiple residencies and you have to do something called the match program. So the match program is where you try to pick your top pick for a program and that program picks their top applicant. And then they try to match you to the best program and the program gets matched to the best applicant that they've ranked. So it's a ranking system. So it's, it's one of these things that's very stressful to go through. And again, um, I wish there had been a company like Motivate MD because they'll help you again through that whole process from start to finish. I ultimately matched at the University of Rochester in Rochester, New York. And, you know, um, I had ranked them number three on my list out of 10 programs that I applied to, and they had ranked me number one. And so I plugged in uh, to Rochester and it's probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I, I had a wonderful residency there. We had, um, you know, things that I would look for in a residency is, are the residents happy? Do they seem nice? Are your attendings, do the attending surgeons seem like nice people? And, at our program, I mean, when I interviewed there, all the residents were normal. Um, they were very excited about the program. The attendings seemed like they treated the residents like people, like normal people and not like uh, objects that they could control for the residency. And so um, it's a it's a tough thing to go through uh, seven years because you're busy. I mean, you're, you're working long hours. Um, I was married at the time. My wife was a forensic pathologist and, and she was going through her pathology residency 
at the University of Rochester. And you know, we had three kids during residency, so you can have a family during residency, but it's, um, it's stressful. And you know, my wife sometimes would go um, drop the kids off at daycare, do her residency, come home, and I'd be lucky if I got home to see the kids put to bed, which most nights I didn't. But as hard and long hours as residency is, it's very gratifying. You learn so many uh, awesome things about the human body. You learn how to operate on the brain and the spine. And uh, I can't recommend neurosurgery enough to anybody out there who's considering it. After my seven years was done and it went by quick, then I ended up moving back to Toledo, Ohio. It was home for me. My dad was still alive and I wanted to be around. He was getting older and I wanted to be around for him. And so I ultimately joined a private practice group in Toledo, Ohio. Fast forward, I've been a full-time practicing neurosurgeon now for over 25 years. And it's been one of the most gratifying things in my life. Um, the field of neurosurgery, there's nothing like it. And just medicine in general, if I could have you feel what it's like to have a patient come back in after you've saved their life and tell you, thank you for saving my life. There's nothing more rewarding that I've ever felt in my lifetime.